The Angry Chicken is a production of AMove TV. Bookmark AMove.tv for more gaming and esports shows. The Angry Chicken is directly supported by listeners like you via patreon.com slash TAC. podcast about Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. This is the Angry Chicken. Greetings and welcome back everyone. This is the first post uh, launch episode for Witchwood of the Angry Chicken. I'm Garrett Weinserl and I'm joined as always by Willie Dills Gregory and Jocelyn Moffat. How are you two doing in this creepy, creepy time? In the post wood. In the post wood. Wood. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there's a, there's before wood and after wood. Exactly. It's uh, it's wood. it's B W and A W. <laughs> not and we're not talking root beer. Things uh things have been good. Weird. There's a lot of craziness going on. Uh, some long animation times which were <laughs> concerning, and then uh, things quieted down just a little bit after that. But yeah. Yeah. It's been fun. Yeah. What about you, Joss? How you liking the witch wood? I know that I am probably going to get in so much trouble for this, and chat room's going to get really mad at me. But Shutterbox Shaman is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I agree with you, Jocelyn, because there it's not a good deck, and I always win against it. It's a fine yeah. deck. <laughs> it's a slow deck. It's not it a problem. Is. It's just that exactly. when the thing goes off, yeah, when the thing goes off then it's a problem, right? Like, mm-hmm. then it's then we both sit there for... Like, I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I'm pretty sure the other guy has conceded every time, but I just don't see that. <laughs> you ticket. don't know? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. the penalty for playing that deck, is that after you win, you still have to sit there for three minutes and sure. wait for the game to finish. <laughs> yeah, it's more frustrating for me when I'm winning yeah. with it, right? Than the other guy. <laughs> I had not really thought about that, uh, but that's a good point. It's, um, yeah. Because, like, if, I feel... If, if they don't change it, though, you know, it is going to be a problem in competitive play, right? Like, when you're watching a tournament, you don't want to watch, you know. Yeah, Ryan, and like, when Frodan, you say change like, it. Just, you know, try to figure out what to talk about for <laughs> 10 minutes while it goes off. When you say one that, like, that they should change it, though, I don't think they should change the card. I think they just need to fix the animation problem. Like, the sure. length of all that stuff that's happening. I don't think there's anything wrong with the card. I like that you have to, you know set something up over the course of 10 turns and you have to draw specific cards like that's the kind of combo I'm okay with I don't sure. want something that happens super early or that you know takes two cards and then I'm dead like this is this is a fine deck it's okay it takes, yeah it takes like <laughs> it eight takes cards time. and then it takes yeah a bunch of time and just because yeah. when you actually you know start the combo well the you have you started the combo like on turn four when you played uh serenite chain gang right like mm-hmm. when you but when you actually click murmuring elemental and then shutter walk then it then you know like then all the craziness happens right but yeah. you did so much to set that up and exactly yeah, yeah. so i think so- i think it's fine it's not broken it's not whatever like people talking about how it's broken that's ridiculous but they need to have a little thing that says like a like We've never had this animation problem before where th- we need degree, like, a button sure. that says, like, show me the outcome. Like, don't mm. make me watch. And I know you can click the card every time the card shows up. Like, you but can click it. But it's still like the animation of just the, yeah. char- the card showing up still takes time, right? Yeah. So even if you're sitting there clicking frantically, it's still going to be a minute or two of animation. So. Yeah, exactly. And that's, yeah. that's, that's really the only issue that I'm having yeah. with it. But outside of that, it's like there's a bunch of weird, fun decks. There's a bunch of old cards that have come back into the meta. Uh, like, oh my god, who knew Raid Leader was going to be in a deck? Like, who <laughs> yeah, knew, oh, like all the these first cards. The time I saw that, I was like, Dills is going to freak out. <laughs> Look, it still sucks as a card, but when you can only play odd cards, I mean, sure. Uh, you know, with like all these old school cards are kind of coming back, and just everything that Witchwood has done is just really entertaining. Um uh, 
And a bunch of, I mean, I think some of it has to do with just rotation, right? Like, not technically just Witchwood cards, but all those other yeah. cards go away. But still, it's just like we're getting classic cards coming back. We're getting cards from recent sets that never saw play suddenly coming back. There's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Apparently, I'm yeah. getting uh, lawn clippings outside of my window right now can you guys hear that uh it, it happens it happens okay. there's there's some uh truck next door here as well so who knows i may hear a chainsaw at some point we may hear hammering it'll be a, a real fully work episode of the angry chicken but um yeah i've been uh i've been enjoying it as far as Shutterwalk. i don't know anything to add to what you guys said I, pretty, pretty much like the animation of it is like the only head scratching part for me i think of this like so far of this entire expansion, there's nothing really where, I, where I'm looking at this like, how did this get through? Except for Shutterwalk's animation. Like, I, so I'm like, I know. I know you guys tried this. There's no way that this wasn't tested. So I don't, sure. I don't, I don't know how yeah. it reached this length. Well, yeah. and they said that like they, they wanted to convey to the player what had happened. But I think you can do that just by like playing the card and showing the outcome, and then you just hover over, and then you can see all of the cards yeah. of all of the animations whose battle sure. cries happened. Like, yeah, yeah. And if you're I think dead, that's fine. Uh... You don't need to show every <laughs> single freaking card. But I mean, it was it's kind of the Yog thing, right? Where oh, yeah. you watch it and you're like, oh my god! But Yog, it was random, so it mm -hmm. it benefited you to watch what was happening yeah. thing after thing. Here, it's like I know what I did. I know all the battle cries I played. I played them specifically to do this thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't need to now see them all happen again. Yeah. Yeah. But other, I mean, okay, screw Shutterwalk. I'm sick of hearing about Shutterwalk. I stayed off the Reddit for a few days because it's the only damn thing they wanted to talk about. Let's talk about Witchwood itself. What other decks are y'all playing? Or Joss, is it just Shutterwalk for you? Face Hunter. <laughs> mm. Gotta yeah, climb, man. Gotta thing. climb. You're really Shoot going for uh, the crowd pleasers today. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know I feel the shame. You know, though, I understand. <laughs> people are going to forget that Shutterwalk was even a thing we complained about when everyone starts complaining about Hadronox Druid, and mm. that's coming. Yeah, yeah. that's... Uh, that that's, deck is OP. That has been that on the rise. That deck is just so annoying. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, Warlock, you know you know how Warlock is like, oh, my God, so OP? Well, they can only bring their stuff back once now. Yeah, they uh, lost their boss, right? Hadronox <laughs> Druid, I can bring my stuff back oh, so many times. <laughs> yeah, that deck's on the uh, on the rise. I wasn't really made aware of it until uh, late last night. Um, I ran into one of them, like, three or four days ago, and I just didn't know what I was up against. And I was just sat sitting there, and I, I was on Skype with my buddy, and I just go... What the hell is going on with Hadronox? Why is Hadronox? Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this hurts. Um, yeah, because you got Witching Hour, so you can bring back... You just only run Hadronox, the only beast in the deck. Like, I I, I think we talked about this when we were talking about these these decks, like, that there's now potential for for this, and it's come true. I mean, there's that, and then you can also... Uh, you know, you're, you're cubing Hadronox, so you're getting multiple Hadronoxes back, like, that turn... So yeah, I had I had some games where I brought back you know four different giant boards full of taunt minions, and uh, yeah, you can't beat that. No other deck could beat that. Yeah. And, and it's hard to rush me down because I'm playing taunt minions along the way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you, know? you kind of start your taunt chain on like turn three with Tar Creeper, and then turn... it's just like taunt every single time. Oh no, I started on turn three with the with Oaken Summons because mm -hmm, I right. Wild Growth on turn two. <laughs> 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 That's great. I've been playing uh, almost exclusively Spiteful Druid. Um, pretty sure I'm going to swap over to Taunt Druid though <laughs> tonight, um, uh, and that's that. I've been really enjoying that. It's it's been going pretty well for me. My my win rate has pretty much settled exactly where it is at on HS Replay. If you filter it by rank five to legend, like it's <laughs> right at fifty eight percent. Like I opened with like an eighty percent win rate. Like I was just like boom rocketed from rank five to rank three, and I was just like yeah, feeling great, and then. Uh, then which would happen? Like which would it already happen? Because I was playing the deck, but it really it happened. People started figuring out what other decks to play, and there was no consistency yeah. in my matchups, and it was just all over the place, and it was a lot of losses. The first couple, and... first couple of days, it's like everyone's just kind of messing around with all sorts of mm -hmm. weird things, and now people are actually starting to go, okay, I know it's good. I know that the odd paladin, paladin is good. I know that odd hunter is good. I know that taunt druid is good. I know that you know, 
And Cube Lock, obviously, is like everyone's just Never like, okay, anywhere. well, we just put in a couple of new cards and we yeah. sold everything else. Yeah. So it's starting to kind of settle in a little bit. But this is the exciting part, right? Where it's like, okay, we've figured out the archetypes. Now we need to solidify the deck lists, right? Like, so yeah. there's still a lot of room to be like I, the Shutterwalk decks was the like the first thing because Disguise Toast was all over that. And now you're starting to see people figure out the actual best build of it, right? Like, oh, is it actually Life Drinker or should we be running like the the uh, whatever the one the three one that deals three random damage? You know what I'm talking about? Like, there's people doing all of sorts of other Life Drinker. Stuff. Life Drinker was awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, but the other one like deals three damage to the board i don't know it's 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 kind of interesting people are starting to figure out maybe it wasn't just exactly that maybe there's other things that we haven't thought of yet and so that's where that's the phase we're in now which is actually my favorite part is mm. now let's the actually refining. figure out the right cards to play in these decks yep. yeah 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 I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see like like you mentioned tantra and i feel like it's really been coming up in the last day or two um and it's just fun because that like as as oppressive as it is and you know it might whether it's an issue or not uh, uh you know we'll we'll get there but um it, it, for me like i was i was just like watching twitter and like on saturday everyone's like well matt has already figured out i'm already bored with this and then sunday it's like oh wait no here's some more archetypes that we hadn't I'm like just calm down and wait people <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah, see what it happens. Really popped into my like, chat saying I don't like the meta, and I'm like, dude, we're so early. Like, I was about to say, I'm like, what meta? Well, <laughs> there isn't a meta yeah. yet. Do you mean the crazy nobody knows meta? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I feel like it usually takes a good like three weeks to a month for the first round of decks to really be figured out, and all of the everyone on ladder to clamber to whatever like the best thing is, and then we kind of have a period of like settling, and then we have you know, well, like quest rogue resurgence right at the end right before the rotation like that stuff happens near the end when people start to get a little bit bored of this figured out meta and they start playing around with stuff and then they go oh wait this thing nobody bothered to try is actually really good so i feel like we get a few different metas throughout the course of a one expansion and uh yeah we still we can take us so long to refine especially all the decks we're going to talk about today there's like what eight ten 13, 14 decks that and, are and that being is, played right now, which is literally crazy. <laughs> just because I got tired of typing. Like, there's more decks. <laughs> there's more. And, and Tauntra was a late addition. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty ridiculous. Like, like overall, my, my experience with Witchwood, with Witchwood that's going to be hard to keep saying, uh, has been overwhelming, overwhelmingly positive. I've, I've really been enjoying it, um, even though I have gone absolutely nowhere. Like rank wise, <laughs> like I, I rocketed to three and then poof, like all the way back down. Uh, mm. After a certain point, I was like, you know what? Oh, I just want to play other decks. I don't care as much about climbing right now. Um, so I swapped off and started uh, experimenting around. And uh, it's not going as well, but at least I'm That's trying nice other decks. That's nice when you get to those rank floors. I know, like, I was just messing around at the end of last season playing with the Cthune decks because Cthune was going to rotate out. And uh, so I'm down at 10 and I'm like, yeah, Cthune, so fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, now I've gone back up to six and I'm like, oh, I should probably like be serious now and get to that next rank floor. But I want to have fun. Look, but rank floors. <laughs> I, I know we're here to talk about like the new exciting stuff. But can we, yeah, literally, I just want to take a minute and just reiterate rank floors is one of the best damn things they ever did. Yeah. It really takes a lot of the anxiety out of this game. And uh uh, I like it from a creative aspect. Like it in, yeah. influences me to try different decks. Well, uh, you used to have to get the legend first to yeah. try different decks, which just uh, seemed now, bonkers, yeah. right? Like reach yeah, the highest uh, named rank you can achieve, and then start screwing around. Now I can <laughs> meme. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wait, no, that's not what it's. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, now it's every it's every five. Now you can meme all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's great. Doesn't necessarily lead up to the most uh, predictable matchups <laughs> when you hit those ranked floors, or but you know it's what it's whatever, it's fine, it's all good. It comes in waves, but um, before we move on, uh, we have a, a we have a, a new sponsor to thank today, uh, and that means I, I, I'm wondering if you would all entertain this and allow me to talk about my underpants. Uh, you know, Garrett, on this show, I think thing. 
I think, yeah, I think all things are on the table as far as topics of conversation. <laughs> okay, well, my underpants aren't. They are currently where they should be. Um, they're not on the table. <laughs> they're not on the table? But <laughs> we have a new sponsor today, and it's MeUndies. Uh, and Ooh. you can check them out by going to MeUndies.com slash TAC. And my thought is... They're there right now. Yeah, yeah. So when, when, I, when I heard this was coming, I was like, well, this will be interesting. I'll have to talk about my underpants publicly. And that's what's about to happen, so strap in. <laughs> um, yeah, so I had never, I had never tried MeUndies before. They approached us to like, hey, would you like some underwear? And I'm like, I'm a dude, so I haven't replaced mine in probably a decade. So yes, yes, I would love some underwear. And Ew. they sent me some. It has shown up. It showed up in my <laughs> mailbox in the most adorable packaging I've ever seen for underpants. And... Uh, like I've read the stuff. They're like, oh, yeah, it's made out of this lensing mic- micromodal stuff. Apparently, it's sustainably sourced, and it's a soft fiber. I don't know what it is. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's cool. That's really, I'm sure that's it's fine. It's, you know, it's probably like every other pair of underpants I've ever had. And, like, seriously, it is the softest underwear I've ever owned. It's so comfortable. It's so freaking comfortable. I just love how you keep saying underpants. <laughs> <clears throat> it's, it's so comfy. It's so freaking comfy. Um, yeah, and uh, I can even I can even choose how... Uh, how bold I want to be with my underpants, you know? There's a, you can get your... your... I ordered the adventurous ones, guys, so look out when I get mine. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, so they've got, uh, you've got your standards, like, you know, your blacks, your grays, your navy blues. They've got, uh, what I opted for, which are bold colors. I don't know, there's something about bright colored, uh, undies that make me happy. Um, or you can go adventurous, where they have, they have unique prints, uh, they're like they're only up for a limited time and then they roll them out and you, and they're, they're very, very fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, check them out. Meundies.com slash TAC. They've got a special offer for our listeners. If you go to that link, you will get 20% off and free shipping. If you're our first time purchaser of me uh, on top of all of that, they offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if you don't love your first pair, you get a full refund. Uh, again, that's 20% off your first pair. And a 100% satisfaction guarantee with free shipping by going to MeUndies.com slash TAC. Again, MeUndies.com slash TAC. And we thank them for their support. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed public declaration of my underpants. So, that's going to do it. And let's move into this week's Hearthstone News. Good news, everyone! (laughs) So, obviously, the big news is that uh, Witchwood is out. We kind of already talked about that. But we haven't talked about the fact that there have been hot fixes already for uh for Witchwood. Uh and when I when I said at the top of the show that the animation time for Shutterwalk was really the only thing that had me going, I'm surprised it's made it in the game. I meant it and I was kind of referencing these hot fixes because a lot of them have to do with Camellios and Voodoo Doll and these are cards where I'm looking at I'm like, yeah, I can see how these things slipped through. Um, so <laughs> if you haven't read the hotfix already, they fixed an issue where Camellios retained the stats after copying a transforming Worgen card and would make all future cards copied maintain those stats and that includes hero cards and weapons. Yeah, there was a toast video, I think, where he killed himself by playing Shadow Reaper Anduin because it had maintained the six attack. And so the game thought it was a minion. And so when Shadow Reaper Anduin came down and killed everything with five or more attack killed himself that was killed him wow yeah, yeah. killed him yeah it's pretty amazing actually i mean <laughs> you know i find it hilarious that toast doesn't just work for blizzard at this point right <laughs> like how does he think of this stuff <laughs> i feel yeah. like with his level of success blizzard can't afford him <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah i think i think i saw Chamman tweeted him earlier like hey how much do they owe you at this point for uh <laughs> for your bug finding all their bugs yeah exactly. he's their qa guy yeah. like, like uh, i don't know it, it's funny though like it, he's thinking of all these things that apparently slipped through the cracks along the way like because yeah someone should have thought of this stuff right yeah. someone should have been like hey yeah, we got these worgen cards and switch back and forth let's see how they interact with death knights let's see how they interact with weapons let's see how they interact with everything mm-hmm. nope nobody yep. did that apparently uh, uh, also, Voodoo Doll would, uh, should no longer destroy minions that have been bounced back to the hand and played again. Okay. They probably I mean, shouldn't. Makes sense. Yeah, I can, I can see how that interaction might have been coded in the background. Like, if it just says, like, on the Voodoo Doll, 
destroy Goldshire Footman. And then Goldshire Footman leaves the board, but Voodoo Doll hasn't died. And then there's another one on the board. And then it's like, well, when I die, I do this thing. And then it checks the condition. Is it on the board? Like, it, it's not tied to a specific, sure. like, minion. It's tied like to it's the name tied to of the, the minion. minion. It's tied to the Voodoo it's Doll. It's tied yeah. to the name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I can see how that would have been a coding choice that they made and how that might have slipped through. But I don't know. Seems like another thing that maybe they should have caught. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I and mean, they're putting in these these cards that do very cool things, but they yeah. got it. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I think that one's still subtler than I don't know playing Shutterwalk ever. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, Shutterwalk didn't get fixed, by the way. Shutterwalk the same. No, I'm, no, I'm aware. No. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it's it's more of a design decision than i think a bug like i think shutterwalk is working as originally intended i think mm -hmm. that is, the question now is do they was still... that original intent good yeah exactly there's no right. bugs to fix with shutterwalk it's fine <laughs> we gotta fix these other things just, just yeah. make it go faster. huge problems just make it go faster they also fixed yeah, an issue Kari enchanter bug it was breaking the game you guys so <laughs> Gotta make sure that they fix that. Uh, yeah, that one, uh, if you missed it, uh, it no longer causes transforming Worgen cards to have stats of 0-0. Zero, zero. Does that make sense? <laughs> no, it doesn't. I have no idea how that happened. And I yeah. under again, I understand how this one slipped through the cracks. I wouldn't have tested Drakari Enchanter in the Worgens. Because okay. my brain would go, oh, they're just going to always be the same stats that they are the turn I played the Drakari Enchanter. And... But, okay, but think about if you are a QA person working for Blizzard. Like, you basically take any card that does something weird and you tr try it with anything that does something weird, right? Like, that's that's kind of their thing. So, this, you know, I, I do think that Toast, yeah, Toast gets a little help from the community, obviously. The, the, all the stuff comes out. Everyone fig figures out all these weird bugs. Um. But this is like, man, this is why I really wish we did have like a sandbox mode, right? So I could just set up weird interactions mm -hmm. and just play with them and see what happens. Because uh, there's so many cool things, but it's like I have to set up a game against myself or a friend or something like that. And be like, okay, now I'm going to play. First I have to draw a Jakari Enchanter. Then I got to draw my Worgen card. Then we got to see what happens. Like, I just want to be like, okay, here's the situation. What happens, right? That's I really want that mode so bad. Yeah, Harston's gonna get a, need to get a lot more robust before that would yeah. even say that. But I mean, a even just like if it was like a, a PTR type of environment, right, where you're not, it's not the actual client itself. It's like mm -hmm. a special client that you can let, like download, and then you can you can log in. You can be like, okay, hey, here's the board state. This is the cards in my hand. Like you could set all that up, and mm -hmm. okay, this is your health total. This is my health total. Like all those things are just integers you can move up and down and just figure out what you want put cards wherever you want them and then be like okay now i play this you know just see what happens like i really want that mode so bad yeah i have a long list of things i want before that but yeah sure sure <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's, it's thing, like right? it's not it's not that difficult like they, this is what they have and they can do this stuff so yep uh speaking of what the hell uh apparently there was an issue where voodoo doll could destroy a hero if it targeted a Camellios that was bounced back to the hand and then copied a hero card. Hmm. So this ties so in. That was, was a different card that got bounced back? Or if Camellios was played as Camellios and then got bounced back. Okay, that's crazy. Yeah, I don't it know It had to exactly. have been Camellios on the board. That, that's the only thing that makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, because it had So to, how did this ever happen? It would have to retain its... <laughs> Who just played Camellios as a 1-1? So one, one? What, what sick happened? individual did that? Oh, you can... Um, uh, it, uh, the, the Hunter card that gives you two random 1-1 one, one beasts, uh, they can get Camellios off of that. Mm. Oh, that's true. They can put it yeah, in your hand. Yeah, if you get a random so, one, so if one you, drop. Yeah. yeah, so they would still be Camellios in your hand the turn you drop that card. What is that? Is it the Raven Collar? Is that the name of that well, card? Well, isn't part of the coding of Camellios that it always is Camellios the same sort of way that it's always the shifting scroll or it's always Molten Blade, even though it's showing you something so, else? No, not once you play I played, it. I, I played Camellios as a minion. I was playing a bunch of Camellios priests, and I played it as a minion, and it just is that minion now. Like, I hover over, it doesn't say that it's Camellios. I mean... Mm -hmm. I don't know why they would do that, but but so then, no, but like when it, gets the, uh, when it gets bounced back into your hand, does it come back as Camellios or does it come back as the card that was down? It should come back as whatever it was on the board. Yeah, mm. 
So what I'm thinking, yeah, but there is there's the card, the little mushroom guy that summons a random one drop at the end of the turn. That could just summon a one one camellias, right? Like there's there's definitely different ways. To right. Shatter saying it goes board. back in your hand as camellias, not the other card that was on the board. Well then, it's now, a lot back of... to the hand and became camellias again. Yeah. Like, if it was another minion, that doesn't make any it sense. It loses its identity when it leaves the board, apparently. Which is what oh. I thought that they said. I, I thought they clarified that. And that the shifting, shouldn't you don't work that way at all. See, you don't see that happen with the shifting scroll or the molten blade because you can't bounce those back into. Like once you play the shifting scroll, the spell happens and then they're both gone, right? The, the scroll and the spell, and then yeah, and there's the no weapon, weapon bounce. You can't bounce a we bounce a weapon back into your hand, so. This is the first minion with yeah, the that only way you can effect? do it is if it, if it becomes a minion. Like well, a shifter. Shifter Zeris. Yeah, but I've had shifter Zeris things bounce back, and they didn't just become shifter Zeris again. Yeah. I'm going to test this right now. I'm just going to make a Camellia deck with, <laughs> with a friggin' panda in it. And we're going <laughs> to see what happens. Because that makes no sense to me. I'm very, yeah, I want to, uh, I need, I need proof of that before I, uh, go either way with because it. Because I thought that because of the way the Camellios was coded, that's why it keeps things like the Keliseth buff, right? So it's because well, yeah, that, the that base makes sense. card yeah, it's because the base card is Camellios, the base card has the Keliseth buff, and then anything that's like layered over top of it adds But it to has that stats. buff while it's in your hand like, and then when you play it, it still has that buff. It just doesn't make any sense to me that then if you play it as another minion, it would come back as Camellios. That makes sense. I, I mean, look, I could see how it maybe does, but that shouldn't. It shouldn't. No, it is cool if it does that, though. Like, I like that better than it just stays whatever the hell it was when you played it. Um, also, Jocelyn, now I want Weapon Bounce because I, I just want a spell called Resheath, like, where you force a, a, a class to sheath their weapon. Or you can do it to yourself, too, if you like want the warrior death rattle weapon to go off, but you don't want to use the charge or you want to have another copy in your hand. I like resheath. Yeah, let's Ooh, get that. Would that would be cool. Yeah, that'd be a really neat warrior spell. Yeah. Let's make it happen. But, <laughs> but make it work for both yourself and your enemy because I love the idea yeah. of a warrior in a fight with another melee class just forcing them to put their weapon away. <laughs> just like grabbing their arm and like... <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Uh, and th there was also apparently an issue with uh, copying Worgen cards. They, they they fixed an issue where copies of transforming Worgen cards with different mana costs would change those costs when they transform. So stuff off of Splinter Graft or Sonya Shadow Dancer, for example. Uh, so it was supposed to have a lower cost and then it would flop its stats and become the other card, raising the cost again? I don't know exactly how it worked. This is just what's in the mm -hmm. hotfix. I did not see this happen. Yeah. Thank you, Jocelyn, Some of these for, asking, are weird. for asking all the questions that we don't have answers to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, I was planning to talk about Shutterwalk here, but I don't think we need to say anything else. I think we kind of yeah, we covered it at the top. Ixar said they're keeping an eye on it. And uh, ex I'm sure expect maybe to hear. I, I don't know. I could see them never saying anything again if they decide not to change it. <laughs> <laughs> I love Dills is just sitting there intently trying to science this Camellia oh, thing. Oh, I'm gonna live. make this happen. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. You, you know, it's you know, it's really good for making this happen. By the way, is uh, the Witchwood Piper draws the lowest uh. Uh, cost card in your deck. Oh, <laughs> so that, like I like more ways to. Get so if my you're Camellios. trying to science Camellios at home, yeah, yeah. Dills exactly. has some tips for, all you for people you. Trying to science your Camellios. Here's how you do it. He has. Uh, he's got some big tips for you. Really, Joss? Yep. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, well, um, I guess this is where we move in and talk about specific decks. Uh, before we do that, let's thank our patrons over at patreon.com slash TAC. If you like the Angry Chicken, uh, if you think we give you some value and you want to give us some value in return, the Patreon is the best way to support the show and support the three of us. Uh, this episode, we wanted to thank Zachary H., Sam McKay with a bunch of numbers afterwards and Rory J L. Thank you very much for your support of the Angry Chicken. Now let's uh, move into our strategy discussion. We're going to talk about a lot of decks. Hit it very hard. You wanna blow something up? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, man. laughs> 
<laughs> Time to pay. So a lot of a lot of decks have have cropped up in the wake of Witchwood, and I figured I would just I couldn't decide what order to go in, so I figured I'd go roughly in order of popularity, which is also pretty close to the order of win rate on HS Replay. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, so we're kicking things off with Paladin. So we have we have left a meta where two different Paladin decks are at the top of the win rates, and we have entered a meta where two different Paladin decks are at the top of the win rates. Also, Q Block is still everywhere. In case you're wondering how much uh, things have changed, actually, the biggest change is that Druid is right there with Paladin in terms of its ladder viability, at least for right now. Um, which is kind of, I don't know if anyone really saw this one coming. I think a lot of people weren't necessarily paying a lot of attention to Druid heading into this expansion just because Jades were rotating out. And that was just their strongest archetype for a year and a half. So I think when that happened, people were just like, oh, they're losing Jades. So, you know, bleh, Druid, whatever. Let's focus on other classes. And uh, yes, this is kind of like the sleeper decks for me are these Druid decks because I wasn't really, I, I was definitely in that boat where I wasn't paying all that much attention to Druid. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of people, us included, fall into the fell into the same traps that we always do, where we 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 focus on the new tools that they're getting that seem obvious, and what it looked like in this was okay, more beast druid. It's never been a thing. I'm still not sure it's going to be a thing this time. And then hand druid, um, those were the obvious things they were mm. getting right in this in this set. I, I don't think I've, any of us really thought. Huh, I think Spiteful is going to finally work for them because we we've messed around with Spiteful druid decks in the past. Um, but they've they've never been as good as Spiteful Priest, so it didn't really latch on, but but now suddenly they're on top of the Spiteful Totem Pole, and Priest mm -hmm. is playing catch-up, um, just because of, I think, more about cards that left than maybe the cards that were added. Yeah, yeah it was Yeah, it's uh, not about new operative. cards, it's about yeah. cards going away, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but um, let's, let's reverse and, and talk about Paladin for a minute, because both Even and Odd, Paladin are, are at the top of the win rates right now and also at the top of the popularity. You're seeing a lot of Paladins right now um, and they're pretty much neck and neck for a win rate. Um, like, I think Evens technically on top right now, but we're talking like a 0.1% <laughs> probably difference. They're between super, the they're super close and actually it's it makes sense that they're close because if you think about it, getting two one ones for two or getting one 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 for one like it's kind of the same <laughs> one one thing. one 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 yeah <laughs> one 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 for one uh yeah. but yeah it's kind of the same value it's just really about which cards you get to capitalize on right yeah but in the end like the, the extra value from your hero power is still kind of the same thing so right like you get a one one on one like you just first turn is a boom make a dude and the other deck is like okay on turn Two, I make two dudes, but on turn one, I either have a one drop or I don't. Like it's, I don't know. It's like in the end, uh, at, by the end of the game, it's kind of like the value is evened out, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, and that's even... a lot of green win rates, oh, right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. So this is yeah. the this is the reason everyone is playing it. And and again, I mean, if if we're looking at the stats, like it's still early. Like some of these, like mid range hunter, it has two two hundred and seventy games logged for this specific even paladin. So that's not a huge sample size, but. Yeah, it's pretty much favored against everything except for Warlock, which was exactly the case with both Paladin variants before Witchwood, before the Year of the Raven. Um, All right, so this is going to happen, by the way. Um, my Camellios is a Warsong commander right now. Okay. <laughs> I have a youthful brewmaster in my hand. We go live right. to Dill sciencing yeah, here we go. Yeah, here we go. All right, playing Camellios as a Warsong commander. All right. I'm going to brew it back to my hand now. It comes back as... A war song commander. <laughs> you're full of crap, chat room. <laughs> we love you, but you're full of crap. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. No, it's just a straight up war song commander now. Okay. Unless, in, I mean, unless now it's fixed, but you know. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, yeah, unless that, because they did mess <clears throat> a lot with Camellia's <laughs> fixes. And we know Patch Note Steve doesn't always tell us everything. So yeah, exactly. Hey, maybe hey. Maybe that was something that they fixed. Uh, I'd be interested to know next turn. You didn't quit the game, did you? No, no, no. I'm still in the game. Okay. Next turn. Does it oh, next turn. Does it change else? into something else? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. More science needs to be done. More end science. turn. Let's go. All right. <laughs> end turn. Go. <laughs> <laughs> are we waiting for that to happen, or are we going to continue talking about? No, decks? continue. Go ahead. 
Uh, it's still worth it, man. Oh. Okay. Still worth it. Okay. All right. Done. Cool. Is done. done. <laughs> we, we love you, chat room. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, back to the back to the Paladin thing. So yeah, it's a it's a favored matchup against basically everything in the game except for Warlock. And even well, then, I believe... even one I found to be favored against Warlock as well because you can run equality in the even one. The odd one has a big problem with it because you can only run like owls to try to get through once they actually get you know void lords down. I actually uh, like but the owl. The even ones able to actually bur- burst through. Huh. I like the owl better because I I can't get through the all the void lord or void walkers afterwards with equality. Yeah, the one threes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but, uh, but what the problem with the owl is you leave the void lord on the board and then they just cube it and stuff like that. With equality, you actually like just remove the thing, you know. So also, I also found that it was favored because things like call to arms just apply the pressure before they get a chance to respond. So yeah, I, I personally prefer the even as well, and that's just because I think call to arms is one of the most insanely powerful cards in the game, uh, has been and still is. Uh, so. I mean, even though you're losing at you, like you can't run the one drops that you kind of hope call the arms to pull, especially especially the uh, protectors. But it, it doesn't matter. It's fine. <laughs> you got loot orders in there. You got knife jugglers. You got the dry gulch jailers, and it doesn't even feel that bad if you don't get all three minions off of call the arms. Because as long as you get a knife juggler, chances are somewhere along the way your dry gulch jailer died. Plus your cheap hero power, you're still getting a ton of value off of your jugglers. Mm. I'm interested that to see that silver sword even as a one of is getting play in this deck i feel like <laughs> i might just rather have valineer i don't really know why you run valineer and silver sword silver sword's actually insane in this deck it, is it it's yeah. kind of your finisher um because mm-hmm. valineer only buffs one minion whereas the silver sword is is board wide and this is a this is a deck that goes and wide you're usually on the board oh yeah you're dude you're always on the board with this deck yeah it's I really underestimated just a bunch of one ones. <laughs> like if, <laughs> if you've got buffs, it doesn't matter that they're one ones. Um, mm-hmm. I'm so glad you brought up Silver Sword because I, I think I've been vicariously uh, announcing my friend Ben's Hearthstone habits over the last couple of weeks because he's the guy that returned after I think he paused after GBG, and uh, so we he and I he's a local friend of mine so he and I talk Hearthstone all the time now. And he was get, getting my opinions on Witchwood cards. And we got the Silver Sword. And he's like, this looks good. I'm like, this card looks like hot trash. This is crap. You should dust it as soon as you get it. And then this comes out. And he's keeping an eye on what's really popular and what's working. And he's like, hey, Garrett, how's that Silver Sword working for you? And even Paladin. I'm just like, I hate you, Ben. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was straight up wrong about that card. But I didn't think about Paladin the way it is now. I thought about Paladin the way it was, right? Like, when you can just you know spend one mana to make a dude it's just so easy to get back on the board so easy yeah and like this one like we're looking at i mean you can you can this isn't necessarily the right way to do it but there's only one of light fuse stegodon like my thought with silver sword was yeah it's cool to get a board wide buff but you just run light fuse stegodons and you get a, a minion and for four mana instead of a mediocre weapon for eight but i was just wrong well, you're, yeah, because you are guaranteed to get the one one off Silver Sword, right? Light Fuse Stegadon, you could end up with Stealth Taunt and I don't know plus three health. Yeah, and then you're like, oh. Yeah, that's, that is uh, that is very true. Whereas you you just want damage. Yeah. But um, let's take a look at Odd Paladin as well. So this is <laughs> I don't know I, I I've, I've been calling him. So I think we landed on even and odd. By the way, I think last week we were like, are we calling him Grayman and Baku Dex? Are we calling him even and odd? I think the community has landed on even and odd yeah even odd just makes even odd yeah yeah so uh this uh gets to run all the things you wish you could also put in your even paladin Mm -hmm. (laughs) and vice versa so um yeah i haven't played this one nearly as much as the even um in my notes though i put notable inclusions and i'm like hmm stormwind champion stormwind champion is the notable inclusion in odd paladin as far as i'm concerned Yeah, I agree. Just looking over the deck really quickly. um, I mean, Fungalmancer, too. That one was seeing play in some mage decks and some warlock decks, but not so much in Paladin before the rotation. So that's, I think, notable for Paladin specifically. Um, Fungalmancer's really good, man. Yeah, I think it was during the 
the Invitational, the, the casters were like, ah, oh, Fungal Mancer, we really underestimated this one because it, it, it did. It started coming online. We started figuring out its value right at the tail end of the Year of the Mammoth. Mm-hmm. And, then it, and then it ticked over and we kind of just took that knowledge forward into the Year of the Raven because Fungal Mancer didn't go anywhere. Yeah, uh, chat room has a really good point too. The odd version, other than Baku, doesn't have any legendaries, so it's actually a lot cheaper to craft. There's a lot of commons in the um, in the odd version. Yeah, I feel like at the beginning yeah, of a lot of see. level up is the epic. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and that's it. Everything else is uh, <clears throat> commons and a couple. See, rares. I actually I don't like this version as much. This is kind of the more aggressive version. I really like the more mid rangey version. Mm. Um. Because you just kind of you end up playing the long game, and then at a certain point you just end up just leveling up and killing them, right? It's mm. but like you can just kind of this is the, the the point of the deck is like you just every time it's a turn where it's you know two mana or more, you always are hitting the hero power like yeah. every single time, and the opponent just has to continue to clear one ones. So is this forever and ever and ever? Uh, is this the one at the top here that runs Stonehill Defender and Corridor Creeper? Yeah, Stonehill Defenders in there. And yeah, it looks like exactly. it drops out Tar Creeper and Stormwind Champion. Yeah, yeah, it's it's more yeah, it's more just about just constantly having stuff on the board, constantly having stuff on the board, and then at a certain point you just kind of okay, now I go face and I kill you. Yeah, this is um, still this one's more about trying to kill you like quickly, right? Yeah. It has mm. so many ones in it. Yeah, this one is still a, a very cheap deck. You you add two more epics in the form of the Corridor Creeper. Yeah, but no no additional legendaries. It's still just Baku. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's also the one that's running the, uh, like the mid range one. Is is that one have the witch's cauldron in it? No, but we saw that a lot over the uh, weekend. Is in the uh, innkeeper's invitational. Yeah. Well, that one I f- I find that one super fun with the witch's cauldron. It <laughs> makes so much sense when you can just generate two one ones every turn for free. Uh, you put the witch's cauldron in, and you can just generate spells now too, right? So. It's just so like you just get so much value from it. I'm having uh, trouble finding any of them with Witch's Cauldron. There's there we go. one you got there. Yeah, here we go. It's actually pretty far down. I felt like uh, at the beginning of the weekend, this was the only damn thing I was seeing from Paladin because uh, mm-hmm. everyone was like, playing. "There's so many cards I underestimated because I was thinking of Hearthstone in its old form, right?" Not yeah. In, like, Oh, I can make That's always the problem in the future. rotation, though. <laughs> I was watching Innkeeper's Invitation. I was seeing Witch's Cauldron just get sick value, and I was just I was yelling at my TV. I'm like, no, I don't want to live in this world. I don't want to live in a world where randomly generated shaman spells dictates a game. Yeah. Uh, but it, at least for now, it doesn't seem to be taking off like a rocket. But you're not wrong, Dills. There is value to be had from Witch's Cauldron. Yeah, because it just... it. One, you know, the limitations that you can't have even cards, but when you run things like Stonehill Defender and the Witch's Cauldron, you end up getting even cards, like the cards you couldn't actually have. Uh, and then also, like, I I was playing with the Witch's Cauldron version, and I got things like Bloodlust and all kinds mm-hmm. of stuff. It's like, oh, I can generate one ones, and then I get Bloodlust? Okay. <laughs> this works. So, yeah. It, it just removal spells that you didn't have. Just so much value, right? And, uh... And like yeah, that version I was still running the Stormwind Champion and things like that too. So it's that I, I found that really fun. It's it's kind of like Spiteful Priest and back in the, like where you'd play it and every game was kind of different. Yeah. Because you know, you just you generate cards you weren't supposed to have, right? We don't have Dragonite Operative anymore, but I still got my mm-hmm. Witch's Cauldron. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting, and I feel like for years I've been uh, I've been recommending like Zoo for anyone on a budget, and I'm like yeah, now just play odd it's I just play well if you're on a budget garrett then what's the replacement for baku i mean come on i think even a budget <laughs> player can replace baku can find <laughs> the dust for a single legendary just trolling you <laughs> <laughs> but joss sometimes i like responding to youtube comments in real time <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's 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 uh, actually take a look at Spiteful Druid, because this is the deck I have played the most of and nestled myself in at a uh, not climbing as fast as I would like 58% win rate. Um, also, this is not the version I have been playing. I do not have uh, Mindbreaker or Crypt Lords in mine. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I saw Mindbreaker in, the, uh, in a couple of the ones that I was playing, and I, I get it, I guess, because of Hunter, but I don't... Or I guess because of Paladin, too, but... I don't know. It just seems I think like you're like, fine. While odd and even decks are popular, there's potentially an argument for Mindbreaker yeah. just because 
everyone who's playing odd and even decks is going to be centered around their hero power, right? That's the whole sure. entire point of the deck. So yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it it, it does make sense that this cre- like crept into the meta during this period, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, I get it. But this uh, to, to me, I look at it and I'm like, oh, I have Malfurion the Pestilent in here, and with the hero power I'm probably the most afraid of, which is the the, the hunter one, uh, Malfurion the Pestilent pretty much does the same thing. But I can do it every turn well, for two mana. You don't get to run swipe in your mm. deck, so I, it, you know, I, I think that's probably really what's going on here is, without the ability to swipe tokens and things like that, like I kind of just need to deny you the tokens. I think yeah. it took me about twenty games before I stopped ending every loss with the thought of, I really need to put swipe in this. Oh right, it's a spiteful. Thing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I can't do that. Can't. <laughs> like I'm yeah. finally at the point where I'm, that my brain doesn't go there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it just feels so weird not having swipe in a in a druid deck. But um, well, and I wonder if there could potentially maybe be an argument for it in a token heavy meta that like if you play your spiteful because the problem that I have with the druid deck over the priest deck is with the four priest spells to potentially pull off spiteful. Usually when I pull my spiteful and play it, I still have something in my deck. But I find I draw ultimate infestation and my spitefuls are dead a lot more often in the druid version. So I wonder in like with the combination of only having two spells in the druid deck and a token heavy meta, if there could be an argument made for putting swipe in the deck, like is a six mana four four and another four drop that terrible of an outcome when you've got a fifty fifty to get a ten drop? Like, but yeah, I just wonder like with this specific meta, if maybe an argument could be made for including swipe anyways, and then you could even mulligan for it when you're going against Paladin, and then if it's not in your deck, you're not going to get the four drop anyway. You're going to get the ten drop. I think my my immediate like pushback is I think it severely increases the amount of games that where where it, it, you don't draw ultimate infestation it's suddenly significantly a worse deck um, so like yeah I think the deck still works more often than not just because numbers um, <laughs> but uh, if you if you add swipe it, it just lowers the power level when things go right well the, the reason why it's working so well too is that we lost a bunch of crappy 10 drops, right? We lost all the mm. old gods. So right. So basically now you're guaranteed an 8-8, eight, eight, a 7-14, or a 12-12. That can't yeah. be targeted by and that is hero insane powers. When you play it on turn 5 or 6. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very strong. But that being said, I'm just making conversation. I want to believe, Jocelyn. I want to live in that world where putting swipe in this deck works because in my head I'm like, yes, cool. I don't fear paladins anymore. <laughs> but well i mean just because pal- paladins are so powerful right now and so popular that and you know they're going to make a whole bunch of one ones both variants of it are making a bunch of one ones so maybe there's an argument to be made there of just keeping them off the board because i mean there's even something like mind control tech in here like that's for all the crazy token stuff well to keep them off the board you just run the little rush guy right that's i think that's the idea mm. Like the idea is like I get on the board and then I use my board to keep you off the board and now I got this now I got this four two rusher that I can use if I need it. But yeah, I mean I don't know. Like I've tried I have tried playing spifles with you know, lots of different stuff, right? I had a spiteful priest in Wild that was running um the friggin' psychic scream, you know? But man, it it does feel bad when I play that six that six drop four four and it would get something bad, right? Because mm. that's like supposed to be like, Oh now I win. Right. Life, well, now I win. Right. And it just wasn't working that way. Yeah. Or now I remove your removal and win anyway via attrition. Like it's, uh, yeah. But it, I mean, it does work. And again, looking at the win rates with the stats available to us, it, I mean, it, yes, it's unfavored against Paladin. But I mean, right now, this this one that we're looking at is sitting at almost 42%. Like, that's not bad. You're still going to win, you know, roughly 40% yeah. of the time against Paladin matchup. And you're in the green against every other class. So it's uh even warlock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're actually favored against against warlock types. I mean, it's not guaranteed. I have certainly lost quite a few games against warlocks, although I'm pretty sure all of them I drew both my ultimate infestations. Mm. But oh my god, I mind control tech to void lord the other day and I was just like I was dancing. I was dancing in my in my office. It was wonderful. Um and then let's take a look at Taunt Druid and what's going on with this complete insanity. Uh, mostly what you really just need to know is Hadronox. 
Mm -hmm. It's the only beast in the deck, so Witching Hour brings it back every time. So, uh, you know, remember people who used to like Nazothing things and Gul'danning things? Well, they can't do it anymore, but you can still bring back all your stuff with the uh, Hadronox and Witching Hour. And then you can naturalize I remember naturalize when this came out, Hadronox. this Hadronox, when it came out with, what was it, Lich King? And everyone was like, why would you ever want to do this? <laughs> Just took a couple of expansions to warm up to the idea, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it uh, it took a couple of expansions to just add an obscene amount of value taunt minions. Yeah, and that's uh, that's yeah. I mean, I looked at it originally and I thought, oh, I don't know about playing, you know, the the apple bomb and stuff like that. Like, I don't I gain all this armor, but no, you actually do need it. Like you, and then when you replay them, you gain that health again, and it's uh, yeah, it's pretty insane. You know, you you bring them back, Lich Kings. You bring them back, Primordial Drakes. You bring them back. Uh, the three sixers, you're bringing back the fo the four or five, like you're bringing back so much stuff. Uh, my version only runs a single Tark Reaper, and I also run uh, Master Oakheart in mine, which is like another. It's basically like another chance to draw Hadronox, right? Mm -hmm. So, it, yeah, and you just I don't know, you just generate so much damn value. Everybody was just conceding to me, like they weren't even trying. Uh, thank you so much for reminding me of that. Remember early in the show where I said uh, before I knew this deck was even a thing, I just ended up against one of them just randomly, like before anyone was really talking about it. He that that person was running Oakart, and Oakart yeah. came down, and I just sat there going, "Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you Oakart out like the Tar Creeper and the Hadronox? It's just it's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Pretty nuts." Yeah, do you I feel even like have this, this is the deck people are going to be complaining about pretty soon. Not like right now they're complaining about Shutterwalk. This is going to be the deck everyone's like, "This is ridiculous. What are mm -hmm. we doing here?" Yeah. So do we start putting in hexes and polymorphs and bounce effects just so Hadronox never technically dies? Well, the trick is because the one the first game I ever lost was against a mage who polymorphed something, and then when I witching houred, I got the sheep instead of Hadronox. Hmm. So yeah, so that's hex the and polymorph are like hex the counters, polymorph. right? Yeah. But even then, I had a fifty-fifty to get the Hadronox. Like I could have mm -hmm. got the Hadronox, I just didn't. Makes sense. Um, yeah. And then this cornered sentry gives me three raps, warrior. So then you put those, which into are the, beasts. Yes. Yeah. Which are beasts. So they, yeah. So that goes into your beast pool, and that kind of screws you up. So there are ways. There's ways. Yeah. Uh, control priest is on the rise because of decks like this. Uh, I mean, uh, because a mind control priest has always done very well against warlock, for example. Um, I guess since I'm talking about it, let's just pull it up. Even though now I'm going out of order, but um, yeah, this, this this deck is is on the rise and not nearly as much green as the decks we started off with. Um, but it it's favored, I think, in a lot of places where it counts. Uh, I mean, this is druid overall, but its its win rate against taunt druid is very strong. I think for the for the obvious reason of if you just mind control their Hadronox, you're golden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the other way too. Yeah, but but if you play smart with this Taunt Druid deck, you can play around that, right? So you wait until turn ten and you Hadronox and then instantly naturalize it, right? Yeah, like yeah, you, I, you just never let them actually get it from you. Yeah, it is, steal it or scream it or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. remarkable how much it plays like uh, Warlocks and Void Lord. Because mm. uh, I was I was slamming a lot of spiteful priest games before uh, before the expansion ticked over, and uh, it it was wonderful when the warlock didn't have a dark pact in hand to to automatically kill a void lord. But <laughs> you knew when they did because they used it immediately because they'd been in that scenario multiple times. So you're right; you can absolutely play against it. But yeah, it's interesting. So, uh, anyway, speaking of warlock, cube is still. Really good, y'all, and uh, hasn't really hasn't really changed much. Uh, Voodoo Doll and Godfrey have found their way in. Uh, Godfrey, to the surprise of I think no one. Yeah, even Voodoo Doll. I mean, they had the slot from Nazoth and the slots from Mistress, and everything else is pretty much the same. I don't think there's anything else in this list that has actually changed. So. Yeah, they, they actually didn't even have to put in anything else to make the Voodoo Doll active. Like, they already had the... Uh, the file. Like, they can kill their own Voodoo Doll with the, the Dark Pact and then also the... the and coil. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and the coil. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, basically, like, those three cards left and then 
these three cards entered. Yeah. <laughs> this is the deck that's making me the saltiest. Like, I know, I know there are players out there, like, on a budget, and this is what they invested in, and they're probably very happy, and I'm happy for them that their deck is still playable, but every time I see it, I just assume it's someone that has every card in the game, and... And and for some reason, just you get wants real to, mad for them not having fun on the first just day. Just wants me yeah. to just wants to force me to keep playing the same damn matchups I was playing for the last three months. <laughs> but yes, this this is this is my salt right now. Is I, <laughs> I would rather lose to Paladin than win against Cube Warlock right now. <laughs> just want to play against new decks. But yeah, if you were uh, if you had invested in in Warlock before the switch, your investment has paid off. Very little has changed. I do still expect uh, when we get, which I, I expect changes about halfway through this uh, expansion, I do expect Warlock to be hit. Mm. Still. I wonder if Cube might be <clears throat> the one that's hit, but... Um, you mean just the card Cube? Yeah, just Carnivorous Cube, I think, might be changed. Yeah. Because, well, like you were talking about Hadronox and cubing your Hadronox and all the rest, like... There are some decks that take advantage of cube, and it's kind of oppressive. So, I can see. The I mean, making. maybe it's got to be but limiting design space. It has to be. Maybe I, I don't know. I I feel like more than that, we're going to see a change to um to just the void lord itself. The void lord, yeah, yeah. Because I do think like cube cube enables some interesting combinations, right? And I do like that. So, I would just like I. It's just that. When you get something like Hadronach, or I mean, like uh, Void Lord, it's just so damn. It's like not even a fu- it's not a fun combination, right? Yeah. Like there's something fun about re summoning a whole bunch of taunt minions with Druid. There's just nothing fun about. Oh, here's a bunch of three nines. Like it, if Druid had something like the the friggin' Void Daddy, it would just be terrible. But it feels okay to me because oh, I'm bringing back Apple Bombs. <laughs> like eh, it's not mm-hmm. that crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing on there uh, spawns more things when you kill them. Because so that's the that's the biggest issue yeah. with Void Lord is yeah, I can clear your board, but then it, there's there's a whole nother board behind it. There's a whole nother nine health I got to get through again. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. I, I think I think honestly, you could do many many things to the Void Lord um, to to just kind of bring it in line and. Yeah, but that's it, why I feel like it's one of the things that they will change because it's just yeah, there's so many options to fix it. Or like I, I think about Shutterwalk and I'm like, how do you actually fix this card? Like, that makes sense. But with Void Lord, it's like, well, we can make it ten mana. We can you know make it summon two one threes instead of three. We can make it a three seven. We can do all sorts. Make it of a stuff. battle cry instead of a death rattle. <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> you want to battle cry summon three one threes? Yeah. So then yeah. if it gets pulled by the lackey, then you don't have to deal with the one well, threes. So if they okay, cheat it out, they did have don't a get thing the where it was battle cry gain death rattle. I saw that too. That was mm-hmm. an interesting idea. Oh, that is that is interesting. Yeah, yeah it basically like it, does the basically does the same thing. Yeah. So you have to play it from hand to get it does the, it does yeah, it does what it does now if you spend nine if mana. If you spend nine mana, because it's yeah. not broken at nine mana. It's broken yeah. when it gets cheated out. Mm-hmm. Mm. I like that. So that was the idea. Or was, when it gets yeah. cheated out or when it gets cubed or, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's just it. When it cheats, it's super broken. Yeah. <laughs> I want like, to. But, but, you know, there's all these options. Like I've seen people say things in chat, like take away its taunt. It's like, that's kind of the idea behind the card. Like, I don't want it to. Yeah. I don't want it to lose the soul of the card, man. Yeah, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just want it to fall in line it's with three, every other card in the game. It's three Void Lords all standing on each other's shoulders wearing a trench coat and a hat man they're trying to look like an adult it, like i love it it needs taunt it, you cannot get rid of taunt they just on want to look like the daddy yeah you can't no you can't get rid of the taunt no i just uh, disagree with that i like all the other suggestions and i want to come back to the carnivorous cube joss because I, I i think i'm 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 in your camp I, I i think down the road there's just no way that cube doesn't limit desi- design space yeah, and I just, I mean, like, I, I think you're right, Dills. I think they're definitely looking at Void Lord. Like, they have to be. So, but I don't think that that means that they're not potentially looking at Cube as well. <laughs> There's no reason why they can't change two oh, cards. Oh, sure. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, this is, the thing is, like, we're talking about this in the new rotation. Yes, Void Lords are only going to be around in Standard for one more year, but Wild is a thing. Like, this is always going to be broken in Wild, and they have access to Nazoth, which is why the Death Rattle is such a problem. So, 
Yeah. I, I really think that because both of these are death rattle cards and Nizoth and these cards will always exist in wild, it has to be looked at. Otherwise, it's just never going to go away. And that's not well, fun in either. But the format. good news is, though, in wild, they don't even care because they just play a bunch of giants on turn. Yeah. Five. So they don't care about Void Lords. I just hope, yeah, Tall Man in the chat room is saying they'll change it right before it goes to wild. I hope we don't have to wait that long because I don't want to play another year of cube blocks. I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm actually, I, I'm still a little concerned about Taunt Druid as well. Like, I'm, I'm with you, Dills. Like, I think Void Lord is worse than a board full of taunts by Druid just because of the, if you clear it, you're good. But that's pretty close. And that's why I'm like, eh, maybe cube, maybe. Because it affects well, both cube's of these also decks. neutral, right? It, it affects everybody. Yeah. Any class yeah. can make a cube deck. So I think neutral one, neutral cards like Corridor Creeper are um, kind of up for nerfs. Maybe not before class cards, but I think there's definitely a lot more things to consider with the neutral cards. Yeah. And if nothing else, I think the advent of Taunt Druid is at least going to slow down any de any decision being made on Void Lord. Mm. Because there's. They are very similar in the way that they they win. But anyways, let's let's get off the Void Lord train. It's a new expansion. I want to talk about something different, damn it. Let's talk about Tempo Mage, because that's new. <laughs> new and exciting, right? <laughs> yep. Um but I'm I'm glad this this archetype is back. I mean there's almost no new cards in it. I think it's just Vexcrow. Yeah. Just Vexcrow, but uh, but Tempo Mage is back again, uh, more because of uh, Mirror Image too. I don't think any of the um, and Breath of Cindergrosa weren't naturally played. Oh yeah, in I was the Tempo versions. Yeah, yeah, I was speaking to specifically Witchwood cards. Oh, but... to Witchwood cards. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 but no, you're you're not wrong at all. Like Breath, I, I was looking at this on like, Breath of Cindergrosa, and then I thought I'm like, actually, that makes a lot of sense with the cards that went away. Like you need to fill this out somehow. Uh, mm -hmm. what's your early game strategy without, you know, cheating out secrets or whatever. And it's, uh, I gotta get a big freaking mana worm and breath of yeah. Zendigosa and mirror image help exactly that arcane missiles. Mm -hmm. And not to mention this also runs arc mage and tinnitus, which it didn't used to. So, right. Yeah. So got these... another kind of finisher with all these one and two mana spells that, you know, start up that engine. So, yep. Yep. So, uh, this is, uh, at least, again, with the stats available to us via uh, HS Replay, this is the most played mage deck since Witchwood's release. I prefer, uh, personally, the uh, the ma the uh, Elemental Mage deck. The, with Frostless Jaina and... With Frostless Jaina and just a whole bunch, like the one that doesn't run a bunch of spells. The yeah. only spells it runs is the spell stone and the card that draws three cards. And if they're not spells, like they yeah. discard spells. Mm. And so it's mini mage. I think it only runs those. And I think it runs uh, polymorph as well because of warlock. But I think that's it, like as far as spells. I have not seen this that, deck. That deck. Oh, and primordial glyph. Um, but yeah, that <laughs> deck kicked my ass so many times because it just <laughs> never stops putting pressure on the board. And then when it gets Frostless Jaina, you can never kill it. Yeah. Like every minion they play. And that 5-5 five, five for 5 that draws a card, oh my god, that thing. The Bonfire Elemental? Yeah, yeah, that card is broken good. It just makes the whole deck, like, just feel so damn good. So, yeah, I, I like that deck a lot, too. Definitely, that's that's a sleeper, I think. Gotcha. I love that Toki Time Tinker is in this deck. <laughs> Why? Like, just on the off chance you get rag, like. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, eh, yeah. Well, that okay. That version is because of Brian Kip. Well, yeah. <laughs> Kipler was playing the version with that card. I, I don't think that people who are tryharding are playing that card. <laughs> Kipler was playing it. So, ergo, everyone. So else it, it's it. the most popular deck. Then, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> It's also playing Archmage Arugula, so well that he's makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because yeah, you can just play that. It's the fact that it's two mana two two. Like it's so easy to just play it and then play the thing that draws three cards. Mm -hmm. You just get massive value. Plus, you play that with your uh, five five that draws cards. So like it's yeah. yeah, that card makes tons of sense. I love that card. Yeah. Well, we need. I mean, Josh, you need to make this because Arugula is in it. Obviously. And I want. <laughs> uh, I will forever refer to this as Arugula Mage. 
But I like it. Yeah, I had not seen this. Um, I mean, yeah, like the stats aren't in its favor versus the Tempo Mage, but the, you're, this looks like so much more fun to play. Mm-hmm. I'm so making this after the show tonight. Yep, that's what I'm doing. Uh, let's actually yeah, take super fun deck. Let's actually take a look at a Shutterwalk Shaman because we haven't really we haven't gone into specifics, but. Um, Dill, do you want to talk about the OTK or Joss? Do you want to talk about it? it sounds like both of you have been playing Shutter Rock a bit. Yeah, so actually it was day one that I showed you this deck, right, Jocelyn? Well, I was already playing a Shutter Rock version, but you showed me the Fire Plume the Harbinger. Specific, yeah, the ridiculous OTK. brokenness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so essentially the, the idea is that you play Life Drinker, you play um <clears throat> Gang Gang. Right, hold on. There's there's a there's just specific Death or uh, battle cries you need to get into your battle cry pool, right? And so you need to get uh, Serenite Chain Gang, Life Drinker, and Grumble, World Shaker. You need to get those into your pool of battle cries. And then what you need to do is Fire Plume Harbinger, a Murmuring Elemental down to one, or you Murmuring Elemental before you play your Grumble and you get back a one cost Murmuring Elemental. Then on turn 10, you can play Murmuring Elemental plus Shutterwalk. And essentially what happens is it does all your battle cries and then it does all your battle cries again. But the second time the Shutterwalk does all the battle cries, it does it again again because it repeats its own. But like it's crazy. And then so what yeah, happens is you just go into battle cry hell. Yeah. And so <laughs> that's the reason why the um, Harbinger was so important, because being able to play your Murmuring Elemental the problem that I was finding in my first build of the deck was I wasn't always like sometimes because the battle cry order is random. Sometimes it would um, grumble before Serenite chain ganging. So yeah, I so wouldn't would actually get, get the copies yeah. back into my deck mm -hmm. or into my hand. So by adding the murmuring elemental being able to be played on turn 10, you actually guarantee that even if the grumble and the Serenite Chain Gang battle cries aren't in the right order because they're happening a second time on that same turn. You're guaranteeing that you're going to get your one one mana copies into your hand. So yep. mm -hmm. you just have to make sure you have room in your hand because that seemed to be a problem a lot well, for me. In this but deck. it's not all you need is room for one extra yeah. shutter walk because as long as you have that the idea is if that if that first time around doesn't OTK them, which oftentimes it ends up doing it. If it doesn't, you then just the next turn, like because you life drink yourself back to full usually, right. you don't die the next turn. And then the next turn you can just play Shutter Walks until it, until it doesn't let you play anything anymore. Yeah. But now this is why I'm starting to see people put in like these other things like the, uh, the three one that casts arcane missiles and stuff like that, because mm -hmm. basically what that does is like ensures that you uh, or like Primordial Drake is why it's in there. Uh, because when these battle cries all go off, you also clear the other guy's pool, right? Because that's the one way sometimes you lose is you're you're doing this whole thing that's supposed to OTK them. It doesn't, but then they have a board and then they just kill you the next turn. So if you can also be clearing their board <laughs> with, say, Primordial Drakes going off over and over again, then, yeah, you definitely are going to live one more turn and then you definitely kill them. Yeah. Boy, I underestimated Life Drinker. I did it! <laughs> well, you no, know, we did, you didn't okay. underestimate Life Drinker you, because it sucks in every other day. <laughs> I yes, it you defended it, Joss, day. but I don't remember you going. Oh, this is a Shutterwalk OTK. <laughs> no, I didn't say it was going to be in Shutterwalk decks. I said it was a good card. I think a six health swing is a big swing. I still don't think this is a bad card. It's not only in Shutterwalk decks. It's been it's made its way into a couple other decks. Actually, I'm still standing by Life decks? Drinker. No, this card sucks balls on its own. This card is terrible. <laughs> Whatever. It's Whatever. a Shutterwalk. It's a Shutterwalk card. I, I will say um, it it has made a very big impact with uh, uh, Deathstalker Rexar. I've, the, yeah, I've seen some true. scary um, Life well, Drinker and I, and I do zombies. Think, I do think that there's potential for this card down the road. Uh, I know that like some even decks are playing it because obviously you don't have a lot of options. So you play it, but like I've seen people comparing it to like Tundra Rhino or whatever it was in magic. And it's not even close. Cause that was like a Yeti. That, that was the whole point of that card was, it was also overstated, right? The problem with life drinker is it's understated. So 
you know, yeah, you swing the board or you swing the health totals a little bit, but um, like it's, I don't know, Hearthstone's more about the board unless you're OTKing people. So, you know. I'm with you a little bit, Joss, but not all the way. I'm just saying it's in other decks. That's all I'm saying. Run a yeah, search but for it's life not Hector. a good card in those. Like people are playing it now. They won't be. They won't be. Give it a little time. They won't. <laughs> I do think this is the first deck we've talked about today, at least that's running it. But yeah, I'm still, I'm still having to weather a lot of uh, a lot of crap being thrown at me for uh, the Silver Sword and Life Drinker. Those seem to be the two there. I was like, hey, Garrett. Uh, is that Silver Sword and that Life Trigger treating you? I'm just like, mm, 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 mm. I, other than Jocelyn, yeah. I don't remember anyone having anything anything nice to say about these cards. And no, 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 we were all wrong about that card for sure. Yeah. Which but, oh, yeah. the the Silver Sword. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I mean, an eight cost. Yeah, sword. It's but again, but again, wrong. like the, you know, it's also a card that's, that's good in one deck, right? Mm-hmm. Like you wouldn't play it in any Paladin other than one where you can't play any odd cost cards, right? Yep. Like that's that's the reason why it's good there too. So, it's I don't know. These cards are all situationally good, but if they're good in a in a deck that makes use of them, like that, yeah, it's a good card in that state. You know, in that scenario. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at Tempo Rogue. Tempo Rogue's making a comeback. It's uh, it's pretty much running like a a, a test package, um, but not a <laughs> not a huge one. Ah. Good, not a huge package. Never mind. <sighs> nice. When I think Jocelyn's gonna giggle, she doesn't. And when I think Chills. what I'm saying is innocuous, you go you go off. Wonderful. Dills has big tips. <laughs> <laughs> mm, big dill tips. <sighs> All right, but uh, yeah. So Tempo Rogue's uh, seeing seeing some play out there. Uh, Joss, uh, have you been playing this since you immediately crafted two golden blank foxes? Uh, I did play a little bit of this on day one before I discovered Shutterwalk and I couldn't really get this to work, but it wasn't like it was my own version. Like it wasn't I didn't have a hench clan thug, which has turned out to be, I think, very good. Um, yeah, that card's nuts. Yes, but like specifically in Rogue, it's just ugh, disgusting. Um, I don't have face collectors, so that wasn't in it. I basically just wanted like my super pretty golden foxes to be in a deck mm. and I didn't think a whole lot about what would so I think I had hallucination blink foxes um, some of these cards and Tess because I think Tess is the only one I actually crafted in terms of legendaries because I just think she's going to be super fun but I think maybe what I need to do is go over to wild instead of uh, play in uh, standard kind of well I think I, I think you know like there's some there's some cards in here for the cute fun factor Mm-hmm. But I think ultimately, again, like these cards won't end up making the cut when we're talking like a month from now, right? Like I don't think you're gonna see Face Collector in here. I don't think you're gonna see SI Seven Agent anymore either. I think you're gonna see Hench Clan Thug and the uh, the dragon that summons a two one poisonous thing. Uh, I think those oh, are gonna yeah. be the only three drops because they're just you know you're just gonna be playing overstatted stuff. And I think we're gonna so go no back to double boxes? Palestine. Well, no. Oh, yeah. You'll still have the blank. Oh, box. okay. Okay. It's like, just a three three <gasps> that gives you a card. Yeah. But yeah, you're not. <laughs> not so you're my not gonna, adorableness. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna have these like. And, and ultimately, I think Tess Greymane might stay just because, because you are running blink foxes and because you're still gonna run hallucination. Mm-hmm. It sometimes you'll just get back some really awesome stuff. Um, but I think it's gonna go back to just being mostly about. Like I think we're gonna end up getting more elementals back in here, and. And then it's just going to be more about, yeah, I take the board and then I Leroy and kill you type yeah. of thing. That's where we're going to end up, I think. But for now, everything's about the, the little fun factor. So, yeah, it will change. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at Spiteful Priest. We haven't talked about this yet. Uh, if you were wondering how anyone found uh, Camellios bugs outside of purposely searching for them, this is the only deck I found that's running Camellios. Which, uh, yeah, yeah. And it's super fun because of Camellios. Uh, I actually did have some some success with this deck. Um, it's super slow, though. You don't kill people; you just outlast them. So, <laughs> uh, the mind, the, the the trick here is you Alex draws them down to fifteen, and then with Shadow Reaper and when you can do sixteen damage the next turn because you do Hero Power, Mind Blast, Hero Power, Mind Blast, Hero Power. I'm gonna right? have to find and- one that's actually running it because this one is not. 
It just takes on, again about, forever to get there. Are we talking about control or are we talking about spiteful? Oh, oh, oh I thought we were talking about control. <laughs> no, we already, we already talked about control because it kind of yeah. just yeah, came out. Yeah, because you right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because like, Camellios like, is spiteful. One. Is it? <laughs> Although you could just put Camellios into spiteful. I don't see why not. No, the, the most popular spiteful deck right now is running Camellios. Oh, okay. And cool. the most popular control deck is not running Camellios. Oh, what the hell? Mine was. Oh, I took out. Okay, so this one has Swamp Ooze and Harrison. I took out the Swamp Ooze. Mm. I was like, I'm not running two weapon hate things. <laughs> the Camellios and silly. Spiteful, it reminds me a little bit of, of stealing other people's cards, which I was doing, you know, before we lost um, Dragon Operative. Operative. There we go. Thank you, Jocelyn. Brain hurts. <laughs> um. But yeah, and where there's dragons, there seems to be scale worms and worm guards right now. So mm. those have found its way into spiteful priest. Yeah, the uh, I was definitely wrong about the scale worm as far as a tempo card because it is like when you can't run removal, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to be able to kill something right when you need to. So it fits in so perfectly into spiteful decks because they're already running yeah. dragon synergy and they. Can't like you said they can't run removal. It, it it's yeah. like it, I I don't understand how none of us saw this coming because I'm like yeah this is just perfect. How do we not consider this? I mean you know it's just the card on its on its face looks bad, but yeah it's just the idea that I can't run spells to kill things. I have to run minions to kill things. So it's like why the druid version is running the four two charger or rusher. Excuse me. <laughs> um, it's yeah it's just the thing is like I saw people playing that card with Keliseth. That card has anti Keliseth synergy. I don't know if you've noticed this. Have you, I don't know if the version you were playing has this. Uh, no, you do, because you, you just don't care, because Keliseth is still good for the rest, yeah. and the Druid of the Scythe is value enough on its own. Sure. As, as yeah, yeah, yeah. The, Druid of the, yeah, the Druid of the Scythe is not really there for the Keliseth. Yeah, no. Exactly. No, no, no. I don't. But it's funny, because like, what if it just said, uh, give this minion plus two and rush, or give this minion, like, plus two attack and rush, or plus two health and taunt, right? Mm. It'd be so much better. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's still it's still working. That's another card I, I feel like I, I underestimated. But that one was less of a. I don't think none of us are playing it for for the way it combos with anything. It's just because of the cards that yeah. were removed. We need more cards, and I need to kill stuff. it's removal. How do I do in a deck where I can't run removal? So, um, Joss, Odd Hunters up next. Yay, face. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yeah, this one is, I feel like, pretty straightforward. Like, you're just, it's super cheap. The stuff you've got in there, legendary-wise, is Leroy, because face, and Baku, because face. <laughs> Turns out, hitting your opponent for three every turn, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> it really it's quite the clock. Like, two damage every turn fit in Face Hunter and felt fast. But just that one extra point of damage on that hero power, oh man. Well, I yeah, I had people like say like oh, I don't see why like one extra damage. I'm like it's not one extra damage. It's like five extra damage. Like yeah. over the course of the game, it's, you take it, them from the like difference. a 15 turn clock. If all you ever do is hit your hero power, do a 10 turn clock with yeah. just that extra bit of damage. It's crazy. Yeah. Like as soon as you start shoot, like you know you're shooting on turn two every single time, and then you're just yeah, you're just pressing that button every turn after that, and it's yeah, it's like uh, you know, you deal 15, 18, or 21 damage with that hero power, and you only need a little little more from yeah. your minions. Yep. And your minions more. are chargy, so yep. you're probably gonna get some minion damage into phase. Uh, mm -hmm. It's 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 uh, it's pretty crazy. And it's basically um, every minion should be able to either hit face or buff a minion that is hitting face. Right? Yeah. So. Yep. Also, it's odd, so you can keep running your kill commands. So it just seemed like a match made mm -hmm. in heaven. Yeah, kill command, wolf rider. You still get the candle shot. You got a whole bunch of little one drop bros that get out there early and then start hitting face. And then plus uh, your companions too, your animal companions. Yep, and you got so Leroy. Your huffers. <laughs> and then you just hope to never drop Baku. I love this yep. curve, man. Fifteen one drops, thirteen three drops, one five one one Baku. <laughs> yeah. One Leroy, one Baku. It's not. It's not a. Uh, it is not a curve. It is. Uh, it's two towers standing next to each other, and uh, two legendaries looking up at them. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. It's. Uh, 
It is just great. Uh, and then the one, th this deck probably just makes me the happiest in terms of Witchwood because it has so many new cards and that's Rush Warrior. This was something that all three of us spent a lot of time talking about on this, uh, on this podcast and it works and it has some pretty solid matchups. And if you really just want to use as many new Witchwood cards as you can, I think this is the deck to try out. Yeah, I think Crowley turned out to be good. We thought he was going to be good. He's good. <laughs> oh yeah yeah i had a game earlier i was trying out control priest and i was just like i'm i'm not sure how i win against this i think i'm gonna heal his crowley so i can mind control it next turn <laughs> it was very weird but um yeah the the man rushes can we just talk about how cool rush is because i'm not used to thinking about the game in this term of like oh my god i can actually utilize my minions the turn i play them and not just in an aggro environment like you can now control the board with minions the turn you play them and yeah. i didn't think that that was going to be as big of a mental shift for me as a hearthstone player as it ended up being sure i i i do think that yeah rush is very cool i think that we're going to end up i i really do hope by the way that they don't abandon rush in future uh sets mm. because i think it's one of those kind of mechanics that like discover could just stick around and we'd be cool with it Yes. Um, but like I look at I look at this version of it now and I think right now like we're just yeah we're just trying to put rush cards in eventually we're just going to put the good ones in right it's, this is similar to like that tempo rogue thing like right now we're still putting in all the rush cards eventually we're just going to be like no only the good ones now mm -hmm. and this deck yeah. is really going to take off at that point because I, I, yeah, I don't know bunch, if this it's is not that good right now right yeah I don't know if this is the final version of this deck um, because yeah. There, yeah some of them just don't seem to be powerful enough. Um, I think the yeah. Worgen one, the the three three with Rush is kind of eh. Well, if you notice, it's the only one of besides legendaries in the deck. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's where they're just trying to fill a slot. But and I'm also not a hundred percent sure about the Fester Root Fester Root Hulk. I know when yeah. we were doing card reviews, I was kind of cautiously optimistic about this one because the stat line was the same as the Give You Armor Chick. Mm -hmm. Um. But no, it turns I, out that it sucks. I tried. Yeah, it. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think it's actually. Um, I don't think it's good enough to be in this deck. There, so. there is yeah. no green looking at its mulligan statistics. Mm. It's not in the green no. for keeping it. It's not in the green for drawing it. It's not in the green for playing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it, it's I mean, it's not it's not terrible though. I mean, it's still it's very close to fifty percent. So, but yeah, this deck. I'm not sure the tools exist to push it up over the top into a like a deck you really want to climb with. Mm -hmm. But man, like one or two cards in a future expansion, I think could just skyrocket this archetype. It's close. Yeah, and you're right. I do like Rush the keyword. I like the Rush cards. I like the idea of having, like controlling the board and removing things with minions instead of spells. I think this is a really good keyword. And I want to see more of it, but yeah, I don't, I don't think this is the final version of the deck, and I hope we see more in the future to make this a better, like a fully fleshed out archetype. But it does work in Warrior better than I think any other class. So we're right about that, at least. Yeah. Well, we've talked about a lot of decks. We want to we want to stop it there for now. Save no, we have one week? more to do, and I can't believe this is a thing. I haven't seen this, so I want to talk about this. Okay, you want to <laughs> talk about Secret Pally? Yes. All right. Why is it, what year is this? <laughs> it is not Secret Pally what like you remember here? Secret Pally. Okay? <laughs> it is it is basically what we talked about when we when we saw Bell Ringer Sentry for the first time. We're like, oh, this might make Secret Pally a thing, but it won't be nearly as good as it was during, you know, GVG. And that's still the case. Like this is a this is a deck. This is a solid deck. Uh, again, it has pretty solid matchups. I, if, if your goal is to climb, I think you're, you're just going to make it easier on yourself to go even or odd with your paladin. Right. Uh, but if you are a hipster, uh, I think this is the hipster paladin. So this Looks one pretty has, bad to me. <laughs> this one has a uh, bell ringer sentry, and then it's pretty standard. Um, it's just it's got. It's, but it's like it's naturally running all the secrets as opposed to we've seen a lot of these secrets from um, hydrologists, right? So yes, 
Well, you're, you're hoping to cheat him out with the Bell Ringer Sentry. Um, yeah. But the, yeah, that's a, I don't understand how, the, I, having not played it, I'm really not sure how this deck wins because mm-hmm. it looks yeah. like it's uh, really depending on just winning off of Call to Arms because every every minion in this deck, with the exception of uh, your Silence, your Sunkeeper, and your, your Bell Ringer Sentries, it's just a, it's a Call to Arms package. And you've, you've got two Blessing of Kings in there uh so between that and unidentified maul and your hero power i guess you're just you're hoping to, to do enough damage but i'm surprised that the stats are as attractive as they are mm. yeah it doesn't even seem like you can do it again if they clear your board like it doesn't seem like you can do it again the way you don't it, seem to have the reload of the even yeah and odd like the pally. way that yeah the way like odd pally and even pally do so yeah it's a problem and there's also and i mean I know this is probably like Mimi, but there's no Liam in this deck, <laughs> which I feel like... Of course like, not. Liam but, sucks. But there's so many one-cost cards in this deck. It seems I like know, if you were ever going to play Liam, why would you... would rather have them be one-cost cards, not <laughs> random legendaries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Liam's just not good. So, but uh, yeah, there's just one more one more Pally deck to talk about. There it is. There's, And this isn't even all the decks that you have a, a decent chance of seeing on ladder, but I think that's where we're going to wrap up the deck talk today. Whew. Yeah, so, I uh, actually have to go. Yeah, we <laughs> need to we need to bring this to an end uh, relatively quickly for Mr. Dills here. Um, yep. But uh, we have another sponsor to thank today, and we're still going to take an email. Uh, keep one of those in there, Joss. Oh, we are? Uh, okay. But, um, yeah, we have another sponsor to thank today. Harry's is still here, no matter how much of our body hair we discuss publicly on air. Uh, you can check out their razor offerings over at harrys.com slash TAC. As we've mentioned before, all three of us have been converted over to uh, to Harry's razors. Um, so we would recommend you check them out uh, because we're basically walking infomercials at this point. I have uh, converted many of my <laughs> many of my family members in uh, a podcast ad read in real life multiple times. So, uh, anyway, they, they still have that trial set offer of the trial set is valued at $13 and you can get it by signing up over at harrys.com slash TAC. That trial set is going to come with a weighted ergonomic razor handle, uh, their five precision engineered blade with lubricating strip and trimmer blade cartridge. You get the rich lathering shave gel and you get a travel blade cover to take it with you. And again, you can claim that by going to harrys.com slash TAC one more time, harrys.com slash TAC. Go check it out. And we thank them for their continued support of the angry chicken and getting rid of my neck beard, which I'm actually in dire need of needing to do right now. But uh, before we go, let's take an email from tacpodcast at gmail.com. Hello. Hello. It's me. Hello. Um, just quickly, do you get my message? Yep. Oh. Hello, brother. <laughs> Jocelyn has been awesome and paraphrased basically four emails from Rob, Sean, John and Chad, which more or less boils down to, oh my God, so many legendaries. <laughs> legendaries. Do you guys know if the pity timer changed or am I just extremely lucky? You are extremely lucky and I am extremely unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yeah, has changed. I've seen, like this wasn't just um, emails that came into us, but I've seen this, like people have been tweeting at me and there's been all kinds of posts on Reddit and stuff. Like I feel like you guys are the super lucky ones, and so you're kind of shouting it from the rooftop. There's there's a lot of Garrett's in the world. <laughs> They're balancing you out. Yes, yeah. So so nothing has changed. Um, also, uh, another uh, couple of emails that I saw in there, and I feel like we get this every time a new expansion comes out. No, you don't get better luck when you buy packs versus uh, or buy packs with real money versus gold. We get this email every time, and it just oh, it triggers me. Like, no, yeah, there's, there's, there's not a button they're pushing there. Yeah. There has been exhaustive, exhaustive yeah. statistics uh, proving that there is no difference uh, in a Hearthstone pack, no matter how you got it, whether it was true. Acquire it. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Arena, quest, gold, money, doesn't matter. Pity timer still at 40. Yeah. The average is closer to one in 20 for legendaries. I opened 250 packs. My average was one in 22. I managed to open 250 packs and still do below average. <laughs> well, but here's the thing, though. I did below average last last uh, expansion by, like, quite a lot. Like, I my last expansion was terrible. I opened, like, you guys were both going off about how many legendaries you guys were getting. 
in the stream. And I was just like, okay. At the end, yeah. I think I had like three or four or something like that. And I opened way more packs than everybody. This time, I opened 20 legendaries and 250 packs. Mm. Like, it is just random. And that is yeah. how randomness works. Yep. Like, it's just. <laughs> Unless you are Jocelyn Moffat. I'm going to get hit at one point. I'm going to get hit hard. I'm going to open one in every 40 packs, and you guys are going to laugh. <laughs> I, yep, yep. If it, it, it's uh, the, the what, uh, what would I don't wish upon you, but I think what would balance the scales is if you just open none. Uh, fortunately, that's just not possible. Yeah, because we do know there is a pity timer. But yeah, as far as I know, nothing has changed. You're, you guys, congratulations, Rob, Sean, John, and Chad. <laughs> You're all just super duper lucky. <laughs> yes. Yes, you are. Um, but yeah, nothing's, nothing's changed. Uh, you can just Google Hearthstone pack opening statistics. There are a lot of really interesting articles out there that, that show where they got their stats from, how they came up with the numbers, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, keep those emails coming. We actually have not re received that many emails since Thursday, the release of which would, I'm assuming because you're all too busy playing, but we're going to favor, uh, emails that come to us after which was released for obvious reasons. We want, uh, topics to be topical so keep sending those emails in tacpodcast at gmail.com and that's going to wrap it up for this email or this entire show not just this email but the show um want to thank our patrons again if you want to support the podcast head on over to patreon.com slash tac if you like the show and you want to help us out for free drop us a five-star review on itunes it helps us find new listeners got to thank our producers declan h michael n sean c johnny s and lve thank you so much for the generosity and uh, pick up some swag. We got coffee mugs, t-shirts, stuff like that. Shirts can be found at shirts.amove.tv. Custom etched glassware, like the coffee mugs I mentioned, are over at etched.amove.tv. You can follow the show on Twitter at TAC Podcast. That's where you'll see things like uh, schedule changes for the live show, like what happened today. But before we go, the three of us do all sorts of other content. Dills, starting with you, where can everybody find you? Uh, you can check me out on twitch.tv slash Willie Dills. That's where you'll be streaming my Witchwood fun. Uh, We'll be working tonight, but Wednesday, Thursday should be good to go. So come on by tomorrow. Sweet. Jocelyn, how about you? I can find me on Twitter and Twitch. I'm at Joss Plays. It's J-O-C-E Plays. You can find links to everything I do over at JossPlays.com. Folks, I'm Garrett Art on Twitter. All of the podcasts are at AMove.TV. Joss and I just embrace the spoilers for a quiet place that is a podcast we do where we spoil movies we spoil tv shows and westworld will be kicking off very soon as well uh also check out my graphic design portfolio over at nomoonart.com if you need a graphic designer it's going to wrap it up for episode 259 of the anger chicken until next time job's done job's done job's done yes good show good show yep chat room streams going down thanks for being awesome